Today I've got a brand new microphone and I do mean brand new. This is from Cinco Microphones, which is a relatively new company that is together as part of the Moman Group, so the same as Feel World, for example. And this mic is not even released yet, actually. It's going to be released on October 8th and today is the 6th. So I'm not really sure specifically how much it's going to cost, but I'm sure that it's going to be very, very affordable. So I want to see today just how well it holds up and if it's going to be worth putting your money down for a brand new microphone from a brand new company. So let's get into it. Hey, I'm Scott and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we do all kinds of unboxings, test reviews, anything photo and video related, and I try to give you as much information as I can without all the extra fluff, no unnecessary B-roll and all that stuff. So if you want to get notifications when new content is uploaded, do make sure that you are subscribed and hit the little bell icon to get notifications. So today, like I said, we've got the Mic D2 from Cinco Microphones. This is a condenser microphone with XLR connections and 48 volt phantom power. It's advertised with all kinds of professional features like uh, gold plated XLR connections connection, an ultra flat frequency response, extremely low self noise and a brass body that will really help with RF interference. The specs at a quick glance do look very, very similar to something like the Deity S Mic 2, which I have right here. And they're actually exactly the same size, although the Cinco does come in a little bit lighter at 165 grams versus the Deity, which is 198 grams. Anyway, let's open this up and see what's included in here. And then I will switch it out with this microphone, which is actually the Deity S Mic 2 S, a shorter version of the S Mic 2. And we'll see how it sounds in this indoor environment. We'll see how the self noise is, uh, the off axis rejection. And then we will also take it outside to see how it sounds in a different environment and maybe I'll throw it into a blimp or something compared to the S mic 2 just to see how it sounds inside of something like that where a lot of those high frequencies are going to be cut out for example. So you can see that it does come in a pretty nice case. This is like a semi hard case but it's more than enough to protect something like this microphone and when you open it up you can see inside that uh, you have all the necessary stuff. You have the user manual here which we'll take a look at later and maybe if there's anything noteworthy I'll put it up on screen. You've got the foam windscreen here. You have a pretty standard little uh, mount that you can put on the end of a boom pole or on top of a, a mic stand or something like that. You have a short cable included, which is actually really nice because if you're using this mounted on a camera, it's really nice to have a nice short XLR cable like this. And of course you have the mic itself, which is now wrapped in plastic. So let's take this off and take a look at it. There's really not much to it. I mean, you know, it's a shotgun microphone that doesn't have anything like a high pass filter or anything like that built into it. So you basically just got your brass tube here with your interference pattern on the side here. There's a little bit of a curve to the front area here. You got your XLR connection on the back um, and then you have, you know, your logo there. Um, but again, this is a pretty simple mic. It feels really, really solid. I mean, it is solid brass. Uh, so let's go ahead and get it mounted, see how it sounds. All right, so I've gone and switched over to the Cinco Mic D2. And uh, just because it is a longer microphone than this small little uh, S Mic 2 S that I had on there, I did have to back the boom pole off a little bit just to keep the microphone out of the frame, but it is still right here, just, just out of the frame. Uh, so it's as close as it could possibly be. And I do have the foam on there and it, or right now, but I will take it off in a second. That foam does add a maybe inch or so to the end of the microphone. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're trying to you know do it like this, get it as close as you can without poking into the frame. I did also notice, and I'm sure you've also noticed now that uh, maybe because I had to back it off a little bit because of the physical size, uh, the input is not quite as loud as it was with the S Mic 2S. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial that back up to about the same level that I had the S Mic 2S coming in at, and then we'll continue all right, so now I've dialed up the input on my Zoom F4, which I'm recording to right now uh, to match the level that I had the SMIC 2S coming in at. And this is what it's going to sound like. I'm getting, I mean, this is my voice. We are indoors and typically longer shotgun microphones like this compared to the short mic that I had on the before are not going to sound quite as good indoors. They might pick a little bit more up uh, of those reverberations that are in the room. And I'm in a very small room now. I do have some sound blankets put up, but it is a very small room. So I'm curious myself to hear how this sounds. But again, on my voice, this is how the mic D2 from Cinco is going to sound. Now this room is not completely silent and I do have the fan noise from the Ninja V coming in here a little bit, but I'm not sure how much the microphone will pick that up. But let's take a quick look at how quiet this microphone is when I'm not talking. So 
So now I have removed the foam cover on here and this is what it sounds like. So I'm not sure how much this foam cover is going to cut out or affect the audio, uh, but you can hear my voice now without the foam cover on there and the mic in exactly the same position. One of the things that I wanted to note is that although the rest of this kit does seem to be pretty good quality, I really struggled to get the microphone into that mic clip that was included in the case. And that is something that may stretch out over time and it's better than being loose, but it was very, very tight to get it in there just out of the box. So next up is just to see how it deals with off-axis rejection and also off-axis coloration, just if the tonality of my voice, for example, changes as I move to the side. You know, this is kind of a range that you might find your talent or your speaker moving in away from, you know, just straight on at the microphone. So hopefully this will give you an idea of what you can expect in terms of realistic movement from your talent uh, and how it will sound when they do that. To give a little bit more of a careful test, we're gonna use some white noise on my phone here, and I'm just gonna move it around the microphone so you can see, in terms of levels mostly, how this deals with uh, noise coming from the side as well as from the rear. All right, so finally, let's take this mic outside and see how it sounds in a more natural environment with you know more surrounding noises going on. Uh, and we will also see how it compares to the DDS mic 2 in that environment. And we will put both of them into a blimp as well to see how good they can maintain their sound when inside of something like that, which does cut out some of those high frequencies and makes it a little bit more muddy. All right, so I'm out here now with the Cinco microphone just above me right out of frame, probably about a foot away from my mouth. Uh, and there is some wind, so if I kind of have a lot of jump cuts here, it's because I'm trying to cut around when the wind blows. But right now, I only have the provided foam windscreen on there, and I don't have it in any kind of blimp or extra uh, wind protection. So this is what the microphone's going to sound like. I'm not in any spectacular location. There's some cars driving uh, by maybe 30 meters behind me. There's some birds out here. Uh, so hopefully you can hear uh, my voice pretty clearly uh, through here. The microphone is pretty close, so it should be clear. But anyway, this is how the Cinco mic does sound in this type of situation. All right, so now I've switched over to the DDS mic 2, and I apologize that I tried to raise these microphones up a little bit higher to see how they sound a little bit further away from the source, but it's too windy up there. I cannot get a clean sound. So for now, we're going to deal with it again right out of frame, just about a foot or so away from my mouth. So again, this is now the DDS mic 2, and I did have to turn the levels on my recorder back just a little bit. So it does seem that overall, the Cinco does have a little bit of a quieter uh, signal compared to something like these Deity microphones that I'm using. Now we're going to go ahead and throw it into a blimp to deal with this wind noise, and we'll see how the Deity sounds compared to the Cinco microphone when it's in that type of setup. The blimp that I have is this uh, Super Shield from Ryko, and I'm going to use uh, the Dead Wombat, I think is what they call it on top of there, just for the maximum amount of wind protection, but also just for the maximum amount of of sound degradation, just so again you can hear the maximum contrast between these two microphones. All right, so now I do have the Cinco microphone in the Rode Super Shield, and we do have some wind, but this should be able to cover it. And I did, of course, have to move the microphone up just a little bit. It's now probably about a foot and a half away from me inside of that shield. Uh, but still, again, the the dead wombat. I don't know if you can see some of the hairs fluffing around here at the top of the screen, but it's just out of frame. But again, this is now, in this situation, what the Cinco microphone sounds like. And we're going to switch over to the Deity, see how that sounds, and then we'll get this wrapped up. All right, so now I've switched over to the Deity S-Mic 2 inside of the Rode Super Shield. And because these two microphones are exactly the same size, the microphone itself in there should be exactly the same distance away from my mouth. I haven't moved the stand at all. I just replaced the microphone. So now this is what the Deity S-Mic 2 is going to sound like inside something like this that may affect the sound quality a bit. So again, I myself haven't listened to these yet. We're gonna go back into the computer, listen to them, and then I will give you some notes in the closing of this video. All right, so I wanted to do some tests with the microphone further away from me just to see how these two microphones compare in terms of the kind of frequency range that they pick up when they get a little bit further away from the source. And I can't get any clean audio outside because it's just too windy. So I'm just gonna do it quickly in here in my dining room. So this is not meant to be amazing audio quality just to get a comparison of how the actual pickup pattern is when these microphones are further away. And right now I'm using the Cinco and it's only maybe a foot and a half or so away from my mouth, but I'm going to go up and put it further away. And then as far as I can get it up to the ceiling in here, which is a little bit high, uh, and then we'll switch over to the DD and see how that sounds by comparison. So now I have the Cinco microphone up about 80 centimeters above me, and this is how it sounds. Again, we're in an indoor, so very non-sound treated room, so the audio is not meant to sound great. Just I want you to hear how it sounds picking up my voice at a further distance. So now this is the Cinco microphone about 150 centimeters above my mouth. 
Again, I'll put that in terms of feet up on the screen, but uh, this is right up against the ceiling of my dining room here, so it's probably not gonna sound that great. But again, this is just how it picks up on the frequencies of my voice when it's at about 150 centimeters above the source. So now this is the DDS mic 2, and as you can see, it's obviously a pretty standard uh, height above my head, probably about a foot and a half or so. But now we're gonna go and uh, throw it up to the same heights that we did with the Cinco microphone just to see how those two sounds compare side by side. So now this is the DDS mic 2, about 80 centimeters above my head. So again, I'm gonna put that in feet on screen, but this is how the DDS mic 2 responds to my voice in this you know, room uh, when it's 80 centimeters above my head. So now this is the DDS mic 2, again, 150 centimeters above my head, and this is the absolute max of how high I can go in this room. So hopefully at this point you can see uh, how similar or how different these two microphones pick up on my voice when they're this far away from the source. Right now, I'm using the Cinco. So now this is the DDS Mic 2. So now I have the Cinco microphone up about 80 centimeters above me. So now this is the DDS Mic 2 about 80 centimeters above my head. So now this is the Cinco microphone about 150 centimeters above my mouth. So now this is the DDS Mic 2 again, 150 centimeters above my head. So while I haven't actually listened to this myself yet, I will put some notes on screen to just give some basic ideas of what I think of the sound of this microphone, but you can hear it for yourselves. Of course, I do recommend watching this now. It's the end of the video, whatever. It's too late to say it, but watch it with headphones uh, to get the best idea of how this microphone sounds. Uh, and I will not put any post-processing on any of the audio in this video. I will, of course, adjust the levels just to get them right, but otherwise I will not do anything to the audio. So you can hear how it sounds for yourself. Otherwise, physically speaking, what's included in the kit, the carry case, everything seems to be absolutely top notch. And again, the full brass body should really help with protection against RF interference, which is always nice to have. So if you're looking for what I assume is going to be a very affordable shotgun microphone, this might be another good one to take a look at. Otherwise, if you want to see more information, I will put links down below. And if you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down there and I will do my best to get back to you. But for now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future. And as always, thank you for watching. How to order at AliExpress. Ordering on AliExpress is a straightforward process. So let's get straight into the video. Launch open your AliExpress application. Also make sure that you're logged into your account. From the main homepage of AliExpress, you can search for the product with the help of the search box at the top. You can also browse through the products categories displayed on the screen. Now, scroll through the product and find the one that you'd like to purchase. Tap on the product to purchase it. And then this will show you other information about the product. You can select the size, colors, and the design. To order the product right away, tap on the buy now button at the bottom right hand corner. Select the size for your product. And then you can also increase or decrease the quantity according to your need. Finally, tap the continue button at the bottom. And then on the next page, Fill in your shipping address and other information. On this page, it'll show you the order details and the summary for the product. You can enter a promo code if available and you'll also need to enter your payment details. Tap on select payment method from the option and choose your desired payments method. You can select PayPal, add a new credit or debit card, select Apple Pay for your purchase or Simply pay for the product after delivery. Select one of the options as a payment method. In my case, I'm going to choose the add a new card option. Go ahead and pick one of the options. You can then scan your card with the help of the scanner button or manually enter your card number in the text box. Enter your card details, your name, your card's expiry date and the CVV code for the card. If you want to save this card's detail, you can toggle on the button where it says save card details and finally tap on save and confirm at the bottom. After you do that, you'll be able to place order and finalize your product. After successfully placing your order, you'll receive an order confirmation with a tracking number. You can use the number to track the status of your shipment. Depending upon the shipping method and your location, all you need to do now is to wait for the order to be delivered. So that is how you can easily place an order on AliExpress. If you found the video to be helpful, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel by hitting the subscribe button. Also press the bell icon so that you'll never miss another upcoming upload from us. I'll see you again in the next episode. Goodbye till then.